Good afternoon, Pre-Cal Honor students. So this one is for Section 3.4, Pre-Calculus, which is the same as 4.4. So again, the reason why it's showing 3.4 because it's a different textbook that I've been using. And now, so let's check it out. So some of the problem here. So start it off with the first one. So let f of x equals x to the power of 4 minus 15x squared minus 10x plus 24 minus 0. Well, this one is just like going back to what we did for the previous unit okay so this one you try to factor it or perhaps this one you want to use that p over q theorem okay so the rational zero theorem to find a zero so let me just take this one to the new page just want to get more space to show work for this one here let's see okay so Let's open up the new slide for this one. So what we found here, it's a four degree quantinomial. So started with that P over Q, so we do have 24 over one. So this one will be considered plus minus one, plus minus two, plus minus three, plus minus four, plus minus six, plus minus 12 and then plus minus 24 all over 1 and looks like this one it's going to be considered 1 0 negative 15 for the dividend and then negative 10 24 so check it out the majority of the number here so it looks like let's see it's even so let's try 2 So bring down the first number, 1, so 1 times 2, 2, 0, 2, 2 times 2, 4, so negative 11 times 2, then that'd be negative 22, so it looks like the number is getting too big, so that won't work. Okay, let's try negative, negative 2 and see what happens. So try negative 2 here, so we do have... Again, similar to what we just did. So first number, bring it down. One times negative two, negative two. So negative two times uh, negative two plus zero, negative two. Times negative two, positive four. So negative eleven. Times negative two, positive twenty-two. And then negative twelve. Uh, positive twelve, excuse me. And then twelve times negative two, negative twenty-four, zero. So what we found here, it's what, x to the power of 3 minus negative 2x. So this one can keep going. Can keep going with that. So this time, so I'd like to try something else. Uh, let's try 6, perhaps. So 1, 1 times 6, 6. And then this one would be 4, 4 times 6, 24. Yeah, but that one would be too big. Okay, so this one can try, let's try three. Again, so once you reduce down two, it's a what, it's a cubic form. But the things that you want to reduce all the way down to the quadratic, so it can find out the rest of the zeros. So let's try three and see what happened. One, one times three, three. So one times three, three. So negative 8 times 3, 24, so that doesn't work. So what about if that's negative? 1, negative 3, negative 5. Okay, so negative 5. 15, so it's 4 times negative 3. Negative 12, so it works. Okay, so what we found here, it's x plus 2, x plus 3, and then the quadratic form, x squared minus 5x plus 4. So factor that once again, so x plus 2, x plus 3. This one here, we got x, x minus 1, x minus 4. So it's four rational zero, 
uh, x minus 4, not x minus 5. So we got negative 2, negative 3, 1, and 4. Okay? So this one expand the natural log of this whole terms over this. Okay, so basically we just want to put in the factor form for that f of x. So which is what? x plus 2, x plus 3, x minus 1, x minus 4. All over. This one is this factorable. So check it out. 3x, 1x, 4. Let's try negative, negative 4, negative 1, or negative 1, negative 4 like that. So the denominator, we do end up with 3x minus 1, and then x minus 4. So basically, the top and the bottom, x minus 4 got canceled out. Okay, and then the rest of that, you want to expand it to the simplest form. So it's going to be written as natural log of x plus 2, plus natural log of x plus 3, plus natural log of x minus 1, minus natural log of 3x minus 1. So that's the final form. Okay, so now let's see what else. Back to the template. So the rest of this is all about solving. Okay, so again, just want to take this one to the new slide. Okay, so going to the new page right here. Okay, so let's start it with that 2a. So 2a, basically this one is just like converting it back to the exponential form, x squared. So that equals 3x minus 2. So that turns out to be a quadratic equation. And then the rest of this. So basically just bring everything all together to one side. So x squared minus 3x plus 2 equals 0. So x minus 2, x minus 1. So x equals 2, x equals 1. So checking the work, so just by plugging the number back to the original form and see whether that's a valid solution or not. Okay. So the other one condensed, so log base 2 of x times x plus 2, so that equals 3. Again, convert it back to the exponential form, 2q equals x squared plus 2x quadratic, so it's x squared plus 2x minus 8, so that equals 0. So negative 8, so which is what? Positive 4, negative 2 for the factor. So we got negative 4 and positive 2. And definitely x equals negative 4 is not the valid solution because once you plug it back here, the domain is negative. So law functions, we're not allowed to have um, negative domain because the restriction with the VA. Okay, so this one, it's only one valid solution. And then the other one, so 4 to the power of natural log of x plus 4 equals 1 over 16. So it's 1 over 4 to the power of negative 2. So natural log of x plus 4 equals negative 2. So natural log of x, so that equals negative 6. So take the base e both sides. So x equals e to the power of negative 6. And this one also condense. Okay, so try to put things together if that's possible, but this one is a different structure. Okay, so take a look at that D and E. So it's getting more complicated. So let me just clear all of this. Okay, so now for D, so natural log of x, quantity square, and plus natural log of 1 over x. So it's a quotient, so we can expand it out to quotient to difference. So natural log of 1 minus natural log of x. So that equals 6. So what we found here is natural log of x quantity square minus natural log of x because natural log of one that's just zero, and then take that six to the right to the from the right hand side to the left hand side. So we do have minus six equals zero. So this one is just the quadratic form. So let natural log of x equals y. So we got y squared minus y minus six equals zero. So factor it. So we do have y minus three times y plus 2 equals 0, so y equals 3, and y equals negative 2. And then unsubstitute, so natural log of x equals 3, and natural log of x equals negative 2. So take base e both sides, so x equals e to the power of negative 2, 
and then x equals e to the power of 3. Okay, so just like that. Also, plug in a number back to the original equation to check the work. And also, this one can be written as 1 over e squared. Okay, so now what about for uh, part E? So this one is quite similar to what we've been doing for the previous section. Solving the exponential form. But the thing is that the overall picture here is a quadratic. So we do have e to the power of 2x minus 4e to the power of x and then plus 4. And then over here minus e. Okay. Equals 0. And for those people who might be wondering, can we factor things out here? Yes, yeah, certainly we can do that. Okay, so it's a quantinomial. So it looks like we can factor by grouping. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, so just want to clear up all the annotation. Okay, let me start out with that one again. So e to the power of 2x minus 4e to the power of x. And then negative negative plus 4. And then minus e equals 0. So this one just regroup them. Okay, so we got e to the power of x. So group the first two terms and then the last two terms. So e to the power of x, so we do have e to the power of, well, it's a quantity square. So it looks like it's e to the power of x again. Okay, so I've got to be very careful with this one. Okay, so we do have e to the power of x minus 4. Okay, but this one here, it's just e. There's no x involved, so we cannot factor by grouping. Oh, another thing that we can do, instead of factor by grouping, we can regroup it with the trinomial. Okay, so instead of doing that way, so let's put it as a quadratic. So e to the power of 2x minus 4e to the power of x. And then over here, minus e. So the e, we just want to separate it, so plus 4. Okay. And then for that negative e, we just want to take that to the right-hand side. Keep it that way. And it looks like this one turns out to be a quadratic form. It's e to the power of x minus 2 quantity square. So that equals e. Okay, so we try to factor this one out. It's a perfect square trinomial. And then from here, we can take the square root both sides. So e to the power of x minus 2. So that equals, so we take the square root. It's a quadratic, so it's plus minus square root of e. And then solve for x. So we do have e to the power of x minus 2 equals positive root e. And what else? e to the power of x minus 2 equals negative root e. So what we can do here, isolate that e to the power of x. Okay, isolate that e to the power of x. And then take the natural log both sides. So we got x equals natural log of root e plus 2. And then this one here, similar. So it's natural log of negative root e plus 2. Just like that. Okay, so now for number 3, so that one just consider condensing. So natural log of x plus a over x minus a so the whole quantity so that equals 1 and then take the base e both sides so e to the power of x plus a over x minus a so that equals 1 well we don't need that e because we take a base e so e to the first power okay so this one let me just restart it Okay, so once again, condense it. So quotient to difference to quotient. So base e both sides. So we got x plus a 
over x minus a equals e. And then right here we can cross multiply, so e times x plus a. So that equals x minus, well, yeah, it's actually the other way around. So e times the quantity of x minus a. So that equals x plus a. Distribute, so ex minus ea, so equals x plus a. And then for the x term, you want to regroup them. So e to the power of x, uh, e, e times x, excuse me, minus x. So that equals ea plus a. Okay, so take out x, so e minus 1. So ea plus a, so we can combine them if you want to. So it's like e plus 1 times a. So x, so that equals e plus 1 quantity times a over e minus 1. Okay, so it's a little bit tricky, okay? So there's so many E involved right here. And then what about for the absolute value? So for the absolute value, first thing that you want to do, bring down the power. So take the natural log both sides. So we do have absolute value of 2 minus x, natural log of 3 equals x times natural log of 5. And then this one, basically, it just consider a absolute value. So absolute value, also we want to isolate that absolute value. So absolute value of 2 minus x equals, uh, let's put it this way. So for the x, let's just swap them, divided by x both sides, and then divided by natural log of 3 on both sides. So over x, over na natural log of 3, over x, over natural log of 3. So natural log of 3 got canceled. So we got an absolute value of 2 minus x over x. So that equals natural log of 5 over natural log of 3. We don't know what that is, so that one is just one of the irrational number. And now from here, we can undo the absolute value, so it's plus minus, plus minus 2 minus x over x. So that equals natural log of 5 over natural log of 3. Okay, like that. So we just want to get more space on the other side right here. Okay, so now the rest of this. So now you want to solve for x. Okay, so got to be very careful. Looks like it's a rational. So one thing at a time. So it started with the positive and then the negative. Okay, so the negative, that means the other side, we need to convert that value to its negative as well. Well, we don't. Just, con just connect it with positive negative because either you change the left-hand side to its negative or the right-hand side to its negative. So this one started with the positive. So 2 minus x over x, so that equals natural log of 5 over natural log of 3. And then for the negative, so we got negative 2 minus x all over x, so that equals natural log of 5 over natural log of 3. Okay, so for those you might be wondering, what should we do right here? So one thing that we can do here, we can just like cross multiply. So natural log of 3 times the quantity of 2 minus x equals x times natural log of 5. Distribute, so we got natural log of, well, 2 times natural log of 3 is just natural log of 9, because 3 squared, minus x natural log of 3, x natural log of 5. Collect the x term together, so na natural log of 9 equals x natural log of 5 plus x natural log of 3, and then factor out x, so natural log of 5 plus natural log of 3. Well, this one we can condense it, it's natural log of 15. So for this one, it's natural log of 9 divided by natural log of 15. Because that 5 and 3, once you multiply them, so sum to product, so it's natural log of 15. Okay, so now what about for this part right here? Also cross multiply, so we got x natural log of 5. So that equals, okay, so this one negative 2 natural log of 3. So negative 2 natural log of 3, then that would be natural log of 1, 9. And then minus... 
negative, negative, positive. So plus natural log of 3 times x. So we've got to be very careful. Collect those like terms. So x. So take this one to the left-hand side. So we do have natural log of 5 minus natural log of 3. So that equals natural log of 1 over 9. So this one you might be wondering, it's a quotient, so we can say that it's what? Quotient to difference, so it's just like negative natural log of 9, because natural log of 1 is 0, so we can just convert that to negative natural log of 9, same thing. So this one condenses it, so natural log of 5 over 3 with the x right in front, and then divide both sides by natural log of 5 thirds. So x would be negative natural log of 9 over natural log of 5 third. Interesting. With the absolute value. Okay, so now let's see what else that we have for the rest of this. So again, the majority of this type of problem, they're kind of non-trivial, kind of tedious. You know, it takes time to, um, to analyze it. Okay, so find a zero. So quite similar to what we did for the previous one. So we're not going to go through it. So solve for the equation. Okay, so this one again. So this one can condense them. Okay, so condense it, and then you'll be able to find the zeros afterward. So log base 3, just for B right here, condense it. So we got x cubed plus 11x squared plus 15x. Okay, and then, so that equals 3. And then this one here, we just want to rewrite it with the um, exponential form. So 3 cubed, so that equals x cubed plus 11x squared plus 15x. So this one is 27x cubed plus 11x squared plus 15x. So bring everything together to one side. And then the other side, just keep that as 0. Again, using that p over q to find out all the rational zeros. So for number six right here, solving, again, take the natural log both sides, quite similar to the one that I showed you previously. Natural log of three. And again, this one, it turns out to be a quadratic. Okay, so it's a quadratic form. So the way to solve for x right here, so it looks like we need to uh, divide it by the exact same element, both sides. Okay, let's do it this way. So this one becomes a lot more interesting because that equation is getting kind of sophisticated. It turns out to be rational, so it's no longer to be quadratic. And so we'll look at that one after we take the natural law of both sides. And it looks like there's certain things that we can do for this. Exponential form, natural law form. Okay, so this one, divide it. So let's say that you want to divide it by a natural log of 2, both sides. And also at the same time, and this one you want to divide it by x minus 1, no, divided by x squared plus x minus 2. So you see that it's x minus 1 over x squared plus x minus 2. So this one, somehow that equals na uh, natural log of 3 over natural log of 2. Okay, so it's a constant with the rational form. And it looks like we need to put this all together into one thing. Okay, so this one, you cannot just simply set it equal to zero. So you need to bring this one to the other side. So that means x minus one over x squared plus x minus two, just like solving the rational equation. So minus natural log of three over natural log of two times this denominator, top and the bottom because you want to bring them all together into one form. So set equal to zero. So that means all the numerator is going to be zero. So that means x minus one minus 
natural log of 3 over natural log of 2. So anything that we can condense that natural log of 3 over natural log of 2. No, nothing we can condense. So we're kind of forcing to um, distribute. So x squared minus natural log of 3 over natural log of 2 x and then minus 2 times natural log of 3 over natural log of 2 so the whole thing equals 0 so somehow this one turns out to be a quadratic form so quadratic form so we do have negative natural log of 3 over natural log of 2 x squared this one collect the like terms together so it's 1x negative natural log of 3 over ne uh, natural log of 2 so that one is written as 1 minus natural log of 3 over natural log of 2 times x. And then the constant, you just want to group them together. So minus 2 natural log of 3 over natural log of 2 plus 1. And then the rest of that, well obviously you don't want to factor it because that's kind of complicated. So using the quadratic formula and then solve for x. So the structure is kind of crazy and kind of complicated, okay? It's not like what we've been usually doing because that involved with like the different functions of the, the terms and then another functions of another term. Okay, so eventually, so this one is what? A, B, and then this whole thing here, C. So using the quadratic formula and plugging that to the calculator. We simplified it from here manually. Okay, so now let's see what else. Okay, so number seven, composition function, find a value of k, and then number eight, determine the domain once again. Okay, let me put it right there. Okay, so back to the new page. Okay, so that f of x, we do know that it's 1 plus e to the power of kx. g of x is natural log of x. So one thing that we notice, so the composition functions, so g of f of x equals 1. It's natural log of square root of e minus 1. Okay. So basically what this one is showing... So that the composition, so g of f of x, so g of f of x, so what we found here, so start with the inner function. So g f of x, 1 plus e to the power of kx, and then plugging that to g of x, so natural log of this whole quantity. Okay, like that. So eventually it's going to be 1. And the solution is, so that means the value of x equals that. Okay, so we plug in the number. So natural log 1 plus e to the power of k times this whole thing. Natural log of e minus 1 to the power of 1 half, let's put it that way. Radical form to the exponential form. And now we want to solve for k from here. So it's kind of complicated. So first thing that you want to do, you want to undo the natural log. So to get base e both sides. So we got e equals 1 plus e to the power of k. So k right here, so this one is considered multiplication with the power. It's right in front of that natural log. So what we can do, we can take the k as one of the power as well. So we can put it as e to the power of natural log of e minus 1 to the power of 1 half k. Again, coefficient to power. So one thing that we notice, e to the power of natural log is just 1. So basically this one is just showing that e equals 1 plus the quantity of e minus 1 to the power of 1 half k. And then you want to solve for k. Subtract 1 both sides. And then we end up with the exact same base. 
holy cow, this one is kind of crazy. So this one, it's just like one equals one half K. So K equals two. It's just like that. Okay, so K equals two. So again, what I did here, so using that composition functioning, so set that equal to one, and then the solution that we found, that's just the value of X. So we plug in the value of X. So the way that I put it in, it's natural log of the quantity, E minus one to the power of one half, and then solve for E. Well, just care of that natural log first, take the base E both sides, bring down all those power, and then right here, so basically just take that K, back to the power position. So one thing we notice, e to the natural law, it's always one. Combine them, so compare the base, same base. So we set the equations, the power equal to each other. So k equals two. And then the rest of this, finding the domain. Again, similar to what we did in the last section. So again, the natural law functions, what we found out is that the quantity must be greater than zero. So that means x minus 4 over x plus 3 got to be greater than 0. Okay. And for those who might be wondering, can I just put it this way? Natural log of x minus 4 minus natural log of x plus 3. I mean, you can do it that way as well. So you can say that x minus 4 must be greater than 0. And then x plus 3 must be greater than 0. So x is greater than so x is greater than 4, and then x is greater than negative 3. Okay, so this one. If you try to do it in this way, so that's saying that it's what? x must be greater than 4 for the domain. But if you try to do it in this way, then you have to do the sign test, you know, all that. So find a possible zero. So x equals four, x cannot be negative three because that'll be undefined. And then you have to do the line test. So negative three, open circle, four right here, close circle. And then put in the factor, the result. So, I mean, you can do it either way. So let's see which one would be better. So plug in a number, so negative four, negative, negative, the result would be positive, that's what we want. Negative three to four, plug in zero. Negative, positive, negative, that's not what we want. Greater than four, five. Positive, positive, all positive. Yes, that's the result we want, okay? So if you're trying to do it in this way, Yeah, so this one you need to flip the sign. So x minus 4, it's greater than 0. The other one, x plus 3, it must be less than 0. The reason why it's less than, because that negative times negative, then that's going to be positive. So x is less than negative 3. And also x is greater than 4. Okay, so interval notation, negative infinity to negative 3, union, 4 to infinity. So it's better to do it in this way. You know, you can test that, all the sign change, things like that. And the other one is quite similar. It's just like what we were doing. But this one is a minus 3. So x, so basically using the same kind of structure. So this one would be the other way around. Okay, so this one... Condense it, so what we got here, find a zero, so x could be four, but x cannot be negative, uh, cannot be three. So four right here. And this one cannot be three, open circle. Again, do the sign test, x minus four, x minus three. So for this quantity, it gotta be greater than zero. Result. So three, anything that's less than three, zero. So negative, negative. So the result's positive. That's what we want. In between, so let's say 3.5 or three and a half. Negative, 
positive, negative, that's not what we want. Greater than 4, positive 5. Positive, 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 yes. So then the solution would be x is less than 3. And x is greater than 4. So it's quite similar to those two. So negative infinity to 3 union, 4 to infinity. All right, so that's it. So the rest of that, you know, just watch the other video, the one I'm going to post up later. And this one is all about the word problem for 3.5, exponential and log, log just, uh, what is it, logarithmic growth. Okay, so basically that, it touched on the real life situation. Okay, so I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching it. So you guys have a great one.